I probably watch too much TV. But at the same time, for me, I feel like watching TV is almost as important as reading books when it comes to getting inspired and learning more about writing craft. Because when you boil it down, it's all characters and plot and world building. It's all storytelling. I've said it once and I'll say it again. No matter what medium you are telling your story in, you can learn and be inspired from other mediums as well. So today I'm sharing four TV shows that I think other writers should check out because they are full of inspiration and lessons about writing and storytelling. The first show is Jane the Virgin, which I chose in part because I think it's one of the best portrayals of what it's really like to be an author in either a TV show or a movie. A lot of times it seems like TV shows and movies portray authors as these very literary artistic people who are like smoking cigarettes and drinking all the time and quoting poetry in everyday conversation. Or the portrayal of the publishing industry will be really unrealistic. They'll have some publisher contact contact them out of the blue. They won't even query agents or sub to publishers. Someone will just contact them wanting to publish their book and suddenly they're very successful and everyone's talking about them in the New Yorker and they have a lot of money and this super nice apartment in New York City. That is not what it's like for most people. And I feel like Jane the Virgin has done a really good job of showing what it's really like to be a romance author in particular. Jane goes through a lot of struggles when she's trying to publish her books. She finally gets a book deal and she thinks that she's gonna be able to quit her day job and focus on writing and then she does the math with the advance and realizes how little money she's actually going to get and then her book comes out and it pretty much flops and she realizes she's going to have to write more and keep trying and keep chasing those dreams. Jane the Virgin also is a really good example of how to work within the tropes of your genre because it's very much based on Spanish telenovelas and it has all of those crazy plot twists twist that you would expect from the genre, all of the rivalries and the plots against each other and the mysterious deaths and the dead people who are actually still alive, they faked their death. And as an audience, you totally buy into all of these plot twists because the show is absurd and wacky from the very beginning. I mean, it starts with Jane being artificially inseminated by accident because her doctor mixes up her file with another patient's. And to make it even more ridiculous. It is the sperm of the doctor's brother. Another show that I think all writers should watch is Broadchurch, especially if you are going to be writing any element of mystery into your books. Broadchurch is a detective mystery show that takes place in a small town in England. It stars David Tennant and Olivia Coleman, so it is really a phenomenal show in general, but normally I wouldn't really get into detective mystery shows, but this one gripped me. It starts with the murder of a young young boy and the entire first season is trying to figure out who killed him. I suspected everyone in this show except for the person who actually did it. They did an excellent job with red herrings and misleading the viewers and obscuring the real murderer the whole time. It's so very good if you need to do any sort of mystery, any sort of big plot twist that you want to be surprising yet believable. Because even though I did not suspect the murderer, they made me believe it once they revealed who it was. The next show is one that we've probably talked about way too much on this channel, but I don't care. It's The Good Place. We'll be doing a whole spoiler-filled live chat about this show next month, so I highly recommend that you watch at least the first couple seasons before then so that you can take part in that. The Good Place does a couple of things very, very well that I've been able to learn from while watching it. The first is subverting viewer expectations. Three seasons in, I have come to accept that I am never going to be able to figure out where the show is going next. It constantly surprises me. From the pacing to the plot twists, the writers are constantly anticipating what the viewers are expecting from the show and playing off of that and messing with it in really successful ways. The other thing that the show does very successfully 
successfully is combining drama and human elements with humor. The show is first and foremost a comedy, but it also makes you feel a lot of other things, and the writers are really good at injecting humor into those sad scenes and those emotional scenes to either diffuse the tension or sometimes to even make it feel even more tense. It really is a phenomenal show and that is why we talk about it so much on this channel and you really should watch at least season one so that you'll understand why. And my final recommendation is actually not a TV show, it is a web series and that is The Lizzie Bennet Diaries. If you have an internet connection, which you obviously do because you're watching this video, and you haven't watched The Lizzie Bennet Diaries yet, I don't know what you're doing with your life. It's a web series on YouTube that debuted about seven or eight years ago, which makes me feel really old to say. It's a retelling of Pride and Prejudice in the modern day, and the whole thing is set up like a vlog. It's just Lizzie sitting down in front of her camera and talking about her day. And that's the first of many writing lessons that I think can be taken from the show, the use of perspective and framing. It's really the narrowest point of view that you could have, but the series is really successful at telling the story and building tension and keeping viewers interested. I mean, people were obsessed with this show when it came out. And that was another thing the show did really well, building tension. Up until the moment where you finally get to see Darcy in one of the vlogs, fans were like foaming at the mouth waiting for it. And once he did come into the series, waiting for him and Lizzie to change their opinions of each other and realize their feelings for each other, it was so tense and so satisfying when you finally got the payoff. And the third and final thing that I feel like the series did really well that you can learn from as a writer is how to make a very satisfying and fresh and interesting adaptation of a work that people are very familiar with. Pride and Prejudice has been adapted into very faithful movies, less faithful movies, it's been retold in YA books and adult books. There are very off-the-wall adaptations like Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, there are sequels like Death Comes to Pemberley, but The Lizzie Bennet Diaries was still able to draw viewers in and keep them hooked and keep them waiting and guessing, even though really we knew what was going to happen at the end. It was the satisfaction of seeing how it was going to happen, how things were going to fall into place in this adaptation, in this retelling. And that's it. Those are the TV shows and web series that I think most writers, if not all, should give a chance, should at least check out and watch the first season or a few episodes. And don't forget to join us this Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time for our live chat.